in the box? Who's in the box? Hey everybody, it's Chris. I'm here for another unboxing because over the last few weeks, a lot more comics have been sent in to the P.O. box. Um, so, if you're curious, uh, if you ever want to send something in for me to take a look at, uh, I can't necessarily promise that I can make a whole episode or anything, but I can at least do the, an unboxing regularly, share with all of you what I got, and express my gratitude. Uh, the link for the uh, address, not really a link, it's really just an address. I'll just put that there. So yeah, if you have a comic that you think I should review, or if you've made something that you'd like to share with me, always appreciate that. Super, super appreciated. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, this first one I've already taken out of the bag. The rest of the uh, boxes I've I've cut open, but I haven't opened yet. But um, this one I recognize the address. Um, this is the second issue of something called Ultimate Millennium. That's by a guy named Ryder Lundquist here. Um, obviously a self-produced, self-made comic. Uh, do it yourself. I, I love that spirit. It's a big, thick book. And Ryder had sent me um, a copy of his uh, first issue uh, a while back. 64 pages. Also included a super nice letter. Um, and I, always exciting to get something like this. He did a, uh, a portrait of me. Look at that. That's amazing. Uh, just so you folks know, all these things like letters and art and the comics, they sort of go in a special area. I've got like a stack of stuff that you guys have donated and um, it means a lot to me. Um, one thing I always appreciate is I don't always have time to look carefully at all of these issues. So if you include like a little synopsis here, then for the unboxing, that just means that I can like um, share that with um, the audience. But I'll just open this up and you can see this is sort of a, a horror comic. Uh, this says that it happens after the second Civil War for the United States. It's, um, it, yeah, it's got like a, it's a post-apocalyptic story. It's a post-apocalyptic story, a, a, a road book, you, you could say. But very, very cool stuff. Ryder, thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. Let's see what else came in. Um, all right, this one. Oh, this one came uh, from another country. It said it came from Canada. So let's open it up here. So there's three comics in there and also um, a flyer. A flyer here that sort of explains um, the world of these comics. Uh, it explains that the artist is um, a guy named Gord Cummings. Oh, sorry, it's a pair of people that make these comic zines. Gord Cummings and Charles Agopsowitz. I hope I got that one right. Um, and they uh, they make a bunch of comics related to cats, they said. Uh, so we've got Genki Erasure here. I like this. This is like, yeah, look at that. Oh, that that's that's sharp printing, actually. That's, that's really crisp print uh, quality on this. And uh, so that's a black and white comic, but obviously read sort of like a comic strip left to right. Um, also plenty of text. So they're, they're definitely playing with the format on that one. Respect. Respect to that. What else? There was also a second one. Genki Admission. Okay, so there's Genki Erasure and Genki Admission. Oh, they're really playing with this uh, format because this text is uh, read this way and then this text is read this way. So you guys are uh, definitely playing with some stuff here. That's that's cool. Um, what is this about? Um, it looks like it's a history book, uh, this one, talking about the, the history of U.S.'s involvement in El Salvador. Well, I like nonfiction comics, so that's really, really cool. Thank you for that. And then finally, we've got something called a bootleg. It says, Batman Crisis on Infinite Emotions. And, uh, yeah, so this is like some sort of, uh, their own story. But it does have some DC superheroes in there. Take a look at that two-page spread of a cover. Very creative. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Um, that's really, really kind of you to have sent something. 
all the way from uh, Canada. There it is. There's a website, finally. Yeah, G-A-N-K-Y-C-O-M-I-X, GankyComics.com. I'll put that in the description anytime you guys have a link. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. This came from Michigan. Oh, nice packaging here. We've got it uh, protected in a little Ziploc bag. I'll break the seal. And it looks like uh, this is a, a, a note with some art by Devin Wright. So I'll share that while I look at this note real quick. Very nice. Oh, that's great. Okay, so Devin says uh, that they are currently working on a children's book that should be free in December or January. Well, look at that. And... Um, and that they were, like, uh, inspired by my recent episode where I just talk about sort of <laughs> failure and, and, and not necessarily giving up, but, like, also what you can learn from stuff like that. Well, that is a lovely little note. Thank you so much for sending me something so personal, and I really appreciate the, um, the art that you sent. Good luck with your uh, children's book project. That sounds great. There is a website, devinwrightart.com. I'll put that link right there, devinwrightart.com. All right, now I've got something from the Garden State, Jersey, New Jersey. And this is an anthology that's called Space Fart Number One. I like that. <laughs> that speaks to me. And uh, let me take a quick look. There's a letter here. Let me read that to myself and see what I can share. All right, this comes from a gentleman named Eric. And uh, Eric, thank you so much for the super thoughtful letter. That like really means a lot. That's super nice. If you guys are curious about this comic, um, it's an anthology. He calls it an R-rated dad jokes, autobiographical stuff, um, a tiny bit of sci-fi monster splatterpunk. So a good mix of stuff in there. And you can find Eric's work on Instagram at space.fart. <laughs> very, very cool. That's a really, that's a really evocative cover, actually. I, I, I really appreciate that. And here's the back. <laughs> Those are little hearts. <laughs> awesome. Can't wait to take a look at this. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate the artwork that's um, on this. Like, obviously, you took a lot of time to sort of give... There's a me, there's a cool cupcake, a sushi roll. I really like that. I'll, I'll definitely be keeping that as well. Hold on. I think there's something else in this. Oh, wow. There's a lot of stuff that was sent in this, just to be clear. All right. All right. So, we've got... Um, a number of uh, stickers, all sorts of uh, cool stickers. That that one's cool. There's a skull with rose. Let's take a look at this letter real quick, and then I'll see uh, what I can share with you. All right, Andre sent me a very nice letter, first of all. Uh, thank you, Andre. Um, and a lot of stuff. So even more stickers. Somebody went nuts with their Cricut to cut out a bunch of stickers. Thank you. Um, a bunch of different uh, sort of like prints that you could probably use as like a postcard or something like that. Um, I've got even more stickers falling out as I go through theirs. Um, a crime comic called Oublet. A Another crime comic called Copper, Volume 1. Really solid artwork in those. Um, and then um, this is his newest book that he says he's shopping around called Choke Point, which is basically, it looks like um, some sort of a street fighting competition, uh, an illegal street fight league. Um, some really interesting colors used there. Um, Andre says it's all self-printed right now, but done in-house, like really, really impressive though. Yeah. Good, good paper quality, good print quality, um, good art, uh, really, really nice. And if you want to see some of Andre's stuff um, on Instagram, he's at Andre Rummel, A-N-D-E-R-U-M-M-E-L. So was I just mispronouncing his name for this whole thing? Did I, I kept saying Andre, is it on Andy? Jesus, I'm terrible at names, folks. I'm just terrible. Yeah, Andy. Andy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm terrible at reading names. Andy Rummel. Thank you, Andy. Okay, now we're getting into stuff that all comes in cardboard boxes. Let's see what we got here. 
Where is this coming from? This is coming from Niagara Falls, New York. I've been there, but it's been quite a while. Okay, these folks have uh, printed two issues of The City in full color. And um, this comes by a team writer, Choi David, artist Dickie Sirigar, and color by Dave Pretorius. Um, yeah, really nice quality, first of all, so that's impressive. Um, and let me just open up to a page and we can show you. So, like, this is a full color uh, action adventure comic, very glossy, very easy to uh, make out. So thank you, gentlemen. And let's see, uh, does it mention a website? It does. There's a website on the back there. Sarazard, www.serazard.com if you want to see more. All right, we still got two more boxes to open here. Let's see what's in this one. Somebody used a gem mint mailer. Those are like the safest way to send a comic. It's super protected against getting bent or anything like that. Um, so it's got like both an interior cardboard and an exterior cardboard shell. Gem Mint mailers. Whoa! I see why! All right, we've got Marvel Fanfare number 29. I don't think I... Let me double check to see if there was a letter here. There is a beautiful letter here explaining why this comic was sent. This was sent by somebody named James Williams, and James says this is a um, comic by John Byrne told exclusively in splash pages. And you know what? That would be a fun idea for an episode, talking about comics that don't really use panels or the panels are a complete page. So that is something that's been done a handful of times, not a ton, so that could make for a very interesting episode. Thank you for giving me an early bit of research material there. And um, yeah, John Byrne on the Hulk was really, really good. He had a brief run, but it, it was it was pretty brief actually. But um, he does a good Hulk. He does he, so. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the comic, and I appreciate the um, the idea for a potential comic tropes uh, episode. Thank you so much. All right, last. One, and this one's pretty thick. Oh, this is also in a gem mint mailer. This is this is very cool. Um, a pair of brothers has sent me this. Um, they sent me the first six issues of their Image comic series called New Masters, which um, they note is about to come out in trade paperback, but they sent me the first six issues. This is by Shobo and Shof, a.k.a. Shobo Coker and Shof Coker. Uh, so a pair of brothers doing what um, what seems to be uh, Afrofuturism. I'll just like show you a little bit there. So that's super cool. Can't wait to read some of that. Um, congrats. Obviously not easy to get uh, accepted and published by Image. So that's that's an accomplishment. And then on top of that, they're doing a book through Kickstarter right now. It's called Outcasts of Jupiter. Um, so, that's also impressive. Yeah, same creative team, and it says Tales from the Jonaverse, so I guess they've got their own universe of stuff. Yeah, similar uh, art and stuff, but a different story. This is, um, Outcasts of Jupiter is, uh, created, it says, oh, they're, they're both Nigerian brothers, so I guess it was Afrofuturism, I guess I had that right. Shobo and Shof Coker are uh, from Nigeria, uh, this is an adventure um, a thousand years in the future. So um, some people just like dealing with, you know, all sorts of uh, societal and environmental collapse. Very cool. New Masters and Outcasts of Jupiter. Uh, so obviously these guys have um, stepped up their game. Successful Kickstarters and Image Comics. Um, very impressive. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, gentlemen. Um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't super aware of this, so um, uh, I, I can't wait to uh, take a look. Wow! That's a pretty diverse selection of comics, isn't it? Um, everything uh, from full color to black and white, uh, self-printed to self-published to crowdfunded to uh, published through a publisher. A lot of different stuff. Even a mainstream comic in there, uh, Marvel fanfare. A lot of diverse stuff. Thank you so much. I love comics, personally. Like, as a medium. So, like, you know, you give me uh, manga, 
You give me um, Bande Dessine, you give me Italian Fumetti, it doesn't matter. To me, it's all comics. It's like, it, it's the storytelling medium that excites me. And when somebody's passionate about their story, I really think that that shines through no matter what type of story it is. Like, the genre doesn't matter. Um, I just always appreciate good, solid storytelling. And it's interesting seeing people play with format. So, um, obviously saw a little bit of that done, too. Thank you so much to everybody that sent something in. In the description below, I'll put links to um, any anything that the uh, creators provided in case you would like to learn some more. And who knows, you know, hopefully this gets the word out on some different comics. I, I know it's a hustle out there. That's the, that's the craziest thing, is that if you make a comic today, you know, you might be, hey, I'm a writer, or I'm a colorist, I'm, a, I'm an artist, it doesn't matter, like, what role you have. These days, if you are the one coming up with that idea, it also falls on you to promote your comic. And I know that that's not easy. Um, I know that like people are always trying to get the word out. There's lots of different social channels, but actually getting in front of an engaged audience is tricky. Um, all I can say is I really hope this helps uh, some or all of you. So please feel free to send anything uh, that you'd like me to share in an unboxing video like this. I'll try to do this at least once a month. Uh, that address is right there. Thank you so much. What am I going to say? The only thing I always end with, keep reading comics.